Hey there, good afternoon. My name is Carlos Venegas, and we will be discussing organic multiferric memory this afternoon. We will be um, exploring um, the variety of uh, ferromagnetic, ferroelectric possibilities within the nanotechnology field. We are interested in the 20 nanometer to 45, 50 nanometer spectrum. So we are talking about biocompatible wearable field effect transistors incorporated to this organic multiferroic memory system where you'll be able to write information as well as fetch or read information from at the nanoscale at the electrochromatic polymer scale. We will be discussing how we can revolutionize this field by treading a different path and analyzing chemicals which are much more suitable for our organisms. And in this way, we can actually push forward with a wearable memory, wearable organic memory. And I hope you enjoy this lecture. We describe an implementation of a biocompatible organi organic multiferroic FET from the very basic polymeric structure. And uh, we have some kind of, we, um, understanding of the way we can move forward implementing this technology. Um, let's have a little bit of a history lesson here. And um, in 1988, there was um, the very important discoveries made in the field of a GMR. Um, MR being uh, the magnetoresistance and a GMR being giant magnetoresistance devices. Well, it set the ground for a whole new field in physics. We call this field spintronics. It revolutionized uh, data storage through the development of this hard drives of sorts um, with immense storage capacities. We're talking about 1.8 zettabytes of data. And that was accomplished um, not too long ago, two years ago, 2012. More recently, we have seen um, exploitation of tunnel magnetoresistance phenomena, um, which are used for sensors. Now, these are passive elements dedicated to reading the magnetic states in these uh, nanostructures. Uh, spintronic devices, therefore, has been leading us through different paths to accomplish uh, magnetic random access memory, or MRAM for short. Magnetic random access memory is based on spin torque writing. Um, we call them ST memory technologies. And they are able to function in low power circumstances and they are able to endure any kind of stress or effect from the environment they might um, be implemented in. And one of these environments, especially for our interest, is the human body. We want to know which electrochromatic polymers we can use to act as dielectrics, um, conductors, capacitors, you name it. They have to have some sort of biocompatibility in order for us to deem their use safe. Now let's touch on the basics of how our organic field effect transistor, in it. if you can think about it as a nano device, which will be a hybrid actually, and it will be able to read and write memory in a non-volatile way, but at the same time we believe that we can implement um, a combination of both um, volatile and non-volatile memory in the same device. We have to understand that flash memory uses a floating gate 
to store a bit and we use this by the presence you know or absence of a charge so we say the floating gate is not charged or neutral when the device operates um, like a normal MOSFET so there's a positive charge in the control gate which creates a channel in the P substrate that we've seen in class um, you know that it carries a current from source to drain um, but the floating gate is negatively charged uh, when this happens um, it shields the channel region somewhat from the control gate and prevents the formation of a channel between the source and the drain um, we we know threshold voltage is the voltage we apply to the control gate and this is when the transistor becomes a conductor um, the presence or the absence of a charge results in a more positive or a more negative thres threshold voltage and um, we can see here from class we've studied the very traditional world line bit line structure um, we can also see that this uh, model is still very relevant when we are discussing um, non-heroic organic memories okay well moving on from there is very you know what we want to push forward is for an array design a tessellated um, circuit design and uh, one way to move forward is to think of the EEPROM structure a floating gate transistor which uses a thin layer of gate oxide between the floating gate and the channel region of the substrate charging the floating gate can be done by the same method you know, a 50 microsecond long 20 volt pulse can draw electrons from the channel region through the thin layer of gate oxide into the floating gate we discharge in other words we apply an inverse voltage of 20 volts that moves the charge from the floating gate into the channel region and we apply this inversion voltage long enough so we can remove electrons from the control gate into the floating gate but we cannot do that and now flash memory so easily I mean flash memory is telling us that a floating gate transistor without a different programming erasure voltage um, can become quite faulty in nature so we have to think about the Fowler Nordheim tunneling of quantum mechanic property structure um, where a particle can pass through a classically uh, meaning no quantum mechanics uh, forbidden region um, we can do this by applying a strong injection field across this oxide gate and uh, the strength of the field can be achieved by either a thin oxide layer so that the volta voltage remains slow contained or by using oxides grown from polycrystalline silicon or a derivative of, of polycrystalline silicon So as we have seen uh, in the first part, spin torque allows building nano devices with a wide range of operations, uh, binary memory, stochastic devices, microwave oscillators, spin wave emitters, amongst others. Now we know spin torque can also be used uh, for microwave detection. Um, let's go back to 2008 and um, it's important to, to um, mention the work of Professor Chua in 2008, uh, Helen Packard in Palo Alto uh, claimed to have fabricated a new kind of nano device. Now they call this nano device the memristor. Now the memristor um, has the following properties. Its current flow is associated with an ion Know, an iron current motion of sorts and we change its resistance as they move along so that gives us mm, control um, as we haven't seen before and in 2008 Howard Packard was the first 
to claim the existence of this memristor, a tunable analog non-volatile resistor. Um, therefore, the more intense the current that passes through the structure, then the longer it passes at the same time, well, the larger the resistance will be. When we're talking about 30 by 32 nanometers square here. It's very small, very efficient as well. Um, usually made from pure silicon. And as we see here, it can be etched front and back. And we can do double patterning, triple patterning, actually. We have um, to exploit the new trends in nanomanufacturing, of course. But it's clear that we are going for uh, tessellation, which in some ways diverts from the tradition. Now, usually made from pure silicon, but we are looking for other alternatives to this. Um, yesterday I was looking into the biocompatibility of barium titanate. Titanate. I can't pronounce that, but but if you do uh, some research on barium, titanate, and polypyrrolene uh, wafers, uh, these are uh, doped semiconductors that can exist within our bodies and provide the um, ferromagnetic tunneling effect that we would like to see when we dig deeper into this uh, transistor structure, this uh, circuit design. Now remember that um, a ferromagnet tunneling structure would require us to sandwich um, this ferromagnetic layer both ferromagnetic layers actually and um, we would have to um, work our way through the source and the drain trap the electrons in that uh, channel in the middle if you will and by doing so we are able to mimic the effect of spin transfer torque that I spoke to you about about five minutes ago Now, it's important to also um, remember that as an ar um, a system ar ar an architect might tell you, well, how can we employ this in terms of the very large scale integration uh, part, which is so essential when making uh, chips of any kind. And we are familiar with the basic electronic elements, the resistor, the capacitor, the inductor. Now, Going back to the 2008 HP discovery of the memristor, which is um, the discovery of, L of Leon Chua from UC Berkeley, uh, we have to agree that there has to be some kind of symmetry. And, um, well, it has been um, called the fourth element for many, the fourth fundamental element, and it's very exciting to see what we can do in terms of the VLSI. The memristor is a promising device with the potential of bringing significant changes in the field of micro and nanoelectronic devices. Um, you know, future applications have been predicted to include the non-volatile memories uh, of multi-terabytes. Um, now, this would be, make computers very efficient, and but also can help us.